today we are talking about something so insane, I want to see it more than anything. We're talking about a natural phenomenon so rare, you might only have one opportunity in your lifetime to even witness it. We're talking about an astronomical event so spectacular, so grand, that you might literally think the world was ending. I'm of course talking about the meteor storm. Not meteor shower, no, no, no. Meteor storm. A meteor shower goes like this, you know, you're with your significant other, you're stargazing, you're looking up at the sky, and you see a little meteor. And you're like, oh my gosh, I saw a meteor. And then like five minutes later, oh my gosh, another meteor, wow. That's a meteor shower, okay? A typical meteor shower has about 20 to 50 meteors an hour. A meteor storm, however, by definition, has at least a thousand meteors an hour, but on super rare occasions can have more than 200,000 meteors an hour. Think about that. 200,000. I mean, that's instead of it being like, it's more like, <laughs> you would think the world was ending. Now you might think this is fake, this doesn't exist. There's no way that this actually happens, but it does. In fact, we have several events throughout history that have documented such cases. The most famous probably being the November 12th, 1833 meteor storm, AKA the night the stars fell. This event was truly insane. So on November 11th, people went to bed thinking it was just a normal night. They had their dinner, they did their chores, they went to sleep, but about five hours later, around 4 a.m., they were suddenly awoken by flashes of light outside their window, almost like a lightning storm. Many of them left their homes, looked up at the sky to see hundreds of stars just falling all the not stars, not lit falling stars, but not literal stars, that would be terrible, but meteors falling all around for like several hours. It, it, it lasted for a long time. It's estimated that there were over 150,000 meteors an hour during this event. Look at these wood engravings. Clearly, something crazy happened on that night. One eyewitness described the scene as this. No language indeed can come up with the splendor of that magnificent display. No one who did not witness it can form an adequate conception of its glory. It seemed as if the whole starry heavens had congregated at one point near Zenith and were simultaneously shooting forth with the velocity of lightning to every part of the horizon. And yet they were not exhausted. Thousands swiftly followed in the tracks of thousands, as if created for this occasion. People even claimed that they could hear slight rumbles off in the distance. They could hear meteor thunder. Do you remember the Chelyabinsk event back in 2013? You know, it was that huge bright fireball. And then like, a few minutes later, there's that huge <laughs> People heard that during the meteor storm of 1833. Not quite at the same level as that event, but they still heard, you know, rumbles in the background. So what the heck is going on? How do meteor storms occur? And when is the next meteor storm? Well, to understand meteor storms, we need to first talk about meteor showers. And to talk about meteor showers, we should probably talk about what meteors even are. So a meteor is a piece of space debris burning up in our atmosphere in a process known as ablation. So out in space, there's a bunch of little tiny pebbles and rocks and pieces of ice. And th there's a lot of, you know, chunkage in space. And sometimes said chunkage comes in contact with Earth's atmosphere. When this happens, ablation occurs. And when ablation occurs, a ton of energy is released and that energy is shown as a streak of light across the sky. A meteor, AKA a falling star, AKA a shooting star. Some of the larger meteors actually end up impacting the ground. These are known as meteorites. Extremely large meteors uh, can, you know, destroy all of humanity. On just a normal night, there's no meteor shower, just a normal, typical night here on Earth. Uh, you might see about five to 10 meteors an hour. Nothing too crazy, but you know, if you're looking, you'll probably see something. Now, a meteor shower is an event where there are more meteors than usual. So like I said, a typical night is about five to 10. A meteor shower is more than 10, often as high as 200. Some meteor showers have more meteors per hour than others. This is known as the ZHR or zenithal hourly rate. 
There are tons of meteor showers. There's a list of them on Wikipedia. Now to figure out what causes a meteor storm instead of a meteor shower, we need to know the mechanisms behind typical meteor showers. What causes a specific night to have more meteors than usual? Well, if we want to figure this out, we must talk about comets. Comets are massive, rocky, icy, bodies up in space that orbit our sun. Now, as comets get closer to the sun, they start to heat up and then they start to shed material. Now, the warmer the comet gets, the more material it sheds. This is what makes up the comet's debris stream. So check out this illustration right here. This is the comet's tail, and that's made up of other, you know, gases and different things. This line right here, this is the debris stream. You can see how this comet actually broke up into several chunks. So that's, you know, part of the debris stream, but all these little fine particles are super small meteoroids. And this debris stream has its own orbit all the way around the sun. You can almost imagine it like a river of rocks orbiting the sun. So a meteor shower occurs when the Earth's orbit intersects with one of these rivers of rocks. And when that happens, that comet's debris burns up in our atmosphere. Let me show you this simulation from meteorshowers.org. This simulation really helps one to understand what is going on during a meteor shower. In this simulation, you can see the debris stream of Halley's Comet. See this section right here of its orbit? See how it gets very close to Earth's orbit? Well, the Earth is in this section of its orbit every year in early May, around May 5th. On May 5th, there's a meteor shower known as the Eta Aquarids. How do they get their names? Well, meteor showers actually occur in a very specific portion of the sky. So during the Eta Aquarids, for example, the radiant of all the meteors, or where they seem to originate from, is over the constellation of Aquarius. So you have the Eta Aquarids. Take a look at this picture right here. This is a picture of the Eta Aquarids. Notice how they all seem to be coming from this little origin right here. This origin is the radiant. Now hold on a second, let's take another look at Halley's Comet's orbit. Notice how we get close to Halley's Comet's orbit again in October? Well that is when we have the Orionids, another meteor shower. Now since we're not quite as close to Halley's orbit in October as we are in May, the meteor shower is not quite as spectacular. Not every meteor shower is the same. We talked about the ZHR or zenithal hourly rate earlier, and every meteor shower has a different ZHR, and every meteor shower looks slightly different. Some meteor showers have super fast meteors because they're in a retrograde orbit with Earth, as an Earth is going against the orbit of the comet, and boom, super fast meteors. Sometimes they're, you know, somewhat aligned, so the meteors are a little bit slower. Some meteor showers are brighter than others, and some have a ton of meteors in general. In terms of the highest on average ZHR, that goes to the Gemidids, which occurs actually like coming up like tomorrow, mid-December. So be sure to keep your eye on the sky for that. By the way, the Gemidids are not caused by a comet. They're caused by an asteroid, a dirty asteroid. This is the only major meteor shower to not be caused by a comet. The most famous meteor shower is probably the Perseids. Now the Perseids only has a ZHR of 100, which is still pretty high compared to typical meteor showers. But what makes the Perseids different from the Geminids is one, it's summertime and people like to, you know, go outside in the summertime rather than the wintertime. But two, the Perseids tends to have brighter meteors. They're a little more spectacular. Now back to meteor storms, think about that for a second. The Perseids is the most famous meteor shower of the year. The news is like, hey, be sure to go out this weekend because of the Perseids meteor shower. It's peaking tonight. Ooh, have a little bit of a party. But here's the thing, all right? At best, you're getting 200 an hour. The meteor storm of 1833 was 150,000 an hour. I mean, you can't even comprehend. So you might be thinking, what causes these spectacular meteor storms? Well, let's take our knowledge that we've already learned about meteor showers and apply it to the meteor storm of 1833. We know the exact date of the meteor storm of 1833, November 12th. Now what meteor shower occurs around November 12th? Well that of course is the Leonid meteor shower. In fact, we know that the meteor storm of 1833 was indeed a showing of the Leonids. How do we know this? Well, the radiant. There were so many meteors from the meteor storm of 1833 that it was so obvious where the radiant was and it was coming straight out of the constellation of Leo. By the way, this is where meteor showers get their name. Notice how it looks like a shower, like look at these illustrations. They're all coming from the same area, meteor showers, like a shower head. Okay, so you're probably thinking, oh, the Leonids, that, those must be a pretty 
crazy sweet meteor shower every year. No. In fact, they're pretty lame. On average, they have about 10 to 15 meteors an hour, making them one of the weakest meteor showers you can witness. So what gives? What happened in 1833? Well, let's look at the comet that causes the Leonids. The comet that is responsible for the Leonids is Comet 55P Temple Tuttle. Temple Tuttle orbits the sun every 33 years. And it's also worth noting that by coincidence, Temple Tuttle's orbit is very close to Earth's orbit. In fact, it's so close that Temple Tuttle is often considered a near-Earth asteroid. However, you do not need to worry about any uh, upcoming impacts because apparently they got the orbit figured out and we're fine, but it is indeed a near-Earth asteroid. Here's what's interesting. The meteor storm of 1833 isn't the only meteor storm in recorded history. In fact, another one occurred about 35 years later in 1868, also during the Leonids. Interesting. So, so, okay, so check that out, all right? So we know the comet's orbital path is about 33 years, and this meteor storm occurred a little bit over 33 years later. People made this connection and they realized, oh, wait a second. Maybe we have a meteor storm every 33 to 35 years because we're going through 55P Temple Tuttle's most recent orbit. And in 1899, people were getting pretty excited. People were pretty eager to see what would happen. Unfortunately, not much happened. Now, when nothing happened in 1899, people were a little bit bummed. And scientists were able to calculate Temple Tuttle's orbit and realized it actually changes every rotation around the sun ever so slightly. In fact, here's an illustration of Temple Tuttle's orbit. See how it changes every cycle around the sun? So people thought, oh no. We had an amazing meteor storm, but since the orbit has moved, the Leonid meteor storm is now extinct. Between 1932 and 1933, during the next cycle of Temple Tuttle's orbit, people were still pretty hopeful that there would be a meteor storm. Unfortunately, during the peak of the Leonids in 1933, the weather wasn't great and there was hardly any observations of this event. Even though the last two cycles had been duds, people still had hope for 1966. People still thought, hmm, maybe this time Will be different. Some astronomy nerds got together, they knew about the historic meteor storms of the past, and they thought just maybe this time would be different. So a bunch of people throughout the United States went out during that year's Leonid meteor shower and looked up at the sky. Several hours passed and not much happened. There were a few little, you know, typical falling stars every once in a while, but nothing insane. People were starting to give up hope, but around 4 a.m. things began to change. A few meteors turn into a few dozen meteors, and then a few dozen meteors turn into a few hundred meteors, and then a few hundred meteors turn into a few thousand meteors. Often the meteors would come in bursts. A meteor burst is when you get like a collection, a little cluster of meteors all at once. Some people even estimated that there was a peak ZHR of 70,000. It was a crazy event. In fact, there were some witnesses that claimed they could hear the rumbles of the meteors. They could hear meteor thunder. Robert Gleaves described the event like this. I was sound asleep when I was awakened by someone shaking me and telling me to get up quick. It was my mother and she seemed very excited about something, not telling me at that moment what it was, only asking me to hurry up and come outside with her. I had no idea that what I was about to see would burn a picture in my mind that would be with me for the rest of my life. There in the sky was the most incredible vision I had ever witnessed. It's as if every star was falling from this North Texas sky, arcing the Earth's dome of atmosphere in every direction. I watched with my mouth wide open for 30 to 45 minutes, and the show never seemed to slow up. It almost brings tears to my eyes when I stop to really think about how incredible that morning really was. But the thing that really made it special for me was the date, November 17th, 1966, my 17th birthday. What a wonderful gift. This was not a typical meteor shower. In fact, it was the first meteor storm in almost 100 years. The Leonid meteor storms were back. So what happened? Why was 1966 different than 1933 slash 32 slash 34? Because it's every 33 to 35 years. It kind of changes a little bit. Why was it different than the previous few cycles? Why, why did this year pop off? Well, people got together, they started doing some, you know, orbital mechanics, they started doing some equations, and they discovered something. They discovered that contrary to the previous belief thought that we were going through the most recent 55P Temple Tuttle debris orbit, 
In reality, we were actually going through historic debris clusters from long ago. The more recent the orbit, the more spectacular the show because that comet stream, that comet's debris tail, it disperses over time and it kind of spreads out and it thins out and it's not as spectacular. But if it was a recent orbit, then it can be much more clumped together, clumps of meteors, clumps of rocks in space that were flying through, okay? So what they discovered was in 1833, during the massive meteor storm, Earth was actually passing through the 1800 orbit of 55P Temple Tuttle. So if you look at this diagram right here, that blue line right there, that is Earth's orbit. And as you can see, we passed right through the recent 1800 debris clump, but we were also pretty close to the 1767 debris clump and the 1733 debris clump. It was discovered in 1868 that we were passing through the 1733 orbit of Temple Tuttle. That's why it wasn't quite as spectacular because it wasn't nearly as recent as it was in 1833, but it was still somewhat recent, so it was still somewhat spectacular. When the Leonids didn't pop off in the late 1800s and in 1933, that was due to us going through extremely old orbits that were already you know thinned out and no good okay but in 1966 we were passing through the 1899 orbit so it was only two cycles behind that's why it was such a strong showing but look how close we are to the 1933 debris clump if in 1966 we had passed through that one instead we would have had an insane meteor storm now you're probably wondering what happened during the next cycle what happened between 1999, 2000, and 2001? Well, the Leonids were not quite as crazy as they were in 1966, but there was still a pretty good showing. In 2001, we went through the 1866 stream, and in 2002, there was a small outburst from the 1767 stream. During this meteor storm, it was predicted there were over 3,000 meteors an hour. Now, 3,000 is a lot. You would notice 3,000, it would be quite a showing, but like I said, still not. 150,000 like in 1833. What's cool is we actually have footage from this meteor storm. This footage from the last Leonid storm is pretty insane. See the smoke tail of the meteors? Like they left these trails, these little smoke trails from the ablation process and then the, the upper winds in the ionosphere slowly like blow them away. It's just crazy, this footage is insane. Okay, so what can we expect? When is the next meteor storm? Well, if you've done the math, then you will know that the next cycle is coming up in 2033 slash 2034 slash 2035. There's always a few years there. On the 17th of November in 2033, it's estimated that there'll be a meteor shower with about 400 meteors an hour. Not a meteor storm, unfortunately, but still easily the best meteor shower we've had in a long time. Now, the next year is supposed to be even better in 2034, specifically November 18th, 2024. On that night, we're expected to have a meteor shower with 500 meteors an hour. But you might not have to wait that long. There is a slight potential for a little meteor burst coming up in 2027. On November 20th, 2027, it is estimated that we might go through a cloud of rocks from the 1167 orbit of Temple Tuttle. So nothing crazy, but there could be like a little meteor burst. There's also a chance of a meteor storm in 2028 from the Perseids. Yes, the Perseids. Apparently we might be going through a little clump from 1479, and that will occur on August 12th, 2028. So be sure to mark your calendars and go outside to watch the Perseids. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to have a ridiculous 150,000 an hour meteor storm, but here's the thing, you never know. There are tons of comets, there are comets that we don't even know about that haven't even been discovered yet that we could easily go through their tail. So, I'm um, not easily, but there's a chance. There's also just so much that we don't know about because Jupiter, Jupiter's always pulling on things, pulling on orbits, messing things up. Uh, so you never know, like we could have a random meteor storm. In fact, there was a meteor storm in 1872 that was completely unrelated to the Leonids. It was actually a showing of the Adronomids, and this was the result of a comet breaking up several decades before. We'll just have to be sure to keep our eyes on the sky. And with that said, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.